Hey, thanks for joining me here today. <laughs> yes, by the way, this lighting is fantastic. Uh, check this out, these lights up here and these mics, gone. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Where am I going? No, no, oh, he's gone, gone forever. Oh, hello, I'm going to show you how we did this today, step by step meticulously going through every little thing that we did. And you're going to enjoy watching this video. And when you're done watching this video, you'll unsubscribe from Epic Light Media. As filmmakers, we find ourselves in so many interesting situations. This week, we filmed a simple conversation video in a factory that makes body armor for foreign governments. After the client's video shoot, we made a video about our setup. This is very typical. We see these interviews all the time, the Barbara Walters interview, with two people sitting knee to knee with at least three cameras. Now, this can actually get kind of tricky because the lights have to be in very specific places and you have to accommodate that when you're doing the wide angle. In this video, we're gonna walk step by step how to film two people sitting knee to knee talking together. The first thing that has to be considered is camera placement. I think a lot of filmmakers overlook this aspect. They start setting up stuff willy-nilly without thinking about the frame. So this is tip one, set the frame, okay? Of all three cameras, they all have to look good before you start setting up all your stands to light the thing. So the first thing we did is set up our main wide camera. Oh wait, where'd it go? Oh, we're using it to film this video so we can't see it here. Imagine a camera right here. See this? I positioned the camera and found a good wide angle that we were happy with. After that was done and the symmetry looked pretty good and stuff, we then placed our A and B camera. I really liked the backdrop over there for our main dude, our main VIP that was in this. And so we used our Ursa, right over here, for his angle. For his angle, I had two priorities. The position of his head in the frame and the background. Um, I wanted the textures in the background to look good and I didn't want any vertical obstructions behind his head or anything that was too distracting in the background. Once that camera was placed, then we placed the other camera over here. Once the frame for all three cameras was established and we were happy with the way they looked, then tip number two happened. We turned off our nasty lights. I say this in every video we make, look at these. These top down lights, that's not shape, that's not cinema. You turn them off, things start looking a lot more interesting and you have control. So uh, we turned them off. That's, that's a big American flag right there. Somebody must really love America. Okay, here we go. Aha, now we begin our beautiful work of art. Remember, lighting is like painting. You're looking at shapes and thinking about the contour of them. Here is tip number three, after you turn off the lights. Now th this gets kind of heady and existential, if you will. As a filmmaker, please, please forget words. Think about shapes, think about contrast, think about color, forget words. What I mean is, don't think that's a face, that's a pipe in the background, that's a cabinet. No, 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 let all words escape your brain. Don't think in words, think in shapes, lighting, texture, depth, all of those things. It doesn't matter what the thing is. You could be filming a ball on a table. You could be filming an apple. It doesn't matter what you're filming. What matters is the shape. Keeping that in mind, now we start shaping the image. So come over here. Okay, tip number four. You gotta have the right gear and plan ahead. This is when gear starts to really matter. These stands in particular are going to achieve the lighting that we need. I need the lights to be in a very specific place. If the lights were by the cameras, everything would look really flat. Typically, you want your lights to be coming behind your subject a little bit so you can have more shape, so the shadow side of the face can be closer to camera. 
So to achieve that, we needed these special stands and we needed to get our lights where they needed to be in physical space. So everything we're using today is Aperture and Aperture's the best. Okay, so we've got some LED lights here with soft boxes. This light is for this dude. That's his key light. This light is for this dude. That's his key light. And crossing behind here is how you wanna do it. Any way you can achieve that, that's great. They could be hanging from the ceiling somehow. I don't care how you do it. We realized, wait, we've got these, these big stands that can really boom over. So that's why we're using these stands. Let me show you these stands. This is a boom combo stand from Kupo. And I like it because it's heavy duty, it's strong, and it can boom out really, really far. Another YouTuber that I follow named Lewis Potts really likes these stands. And I actually learned about these stands from Lewis Potts in one of his videos. I pulled the trigger and bought some. So if you want to learn from the best, watch Lewis Potts. If you want to continue to be stuck in mediocrity, watch our channel. So these in conjunction with each other are our two key lights. And the color temperature of these lights mattered a lot. I wanted to match some of the ambient light in this room. And so we set these lights to 4,700 Kelvin. We just eyeballed that. It felt right for the space. And this light is at 20%. After our key lights were turned on, our attention then went to the background. And this is tip number five. Don't forget about the background. You want there to be some interest. To make the face pop with this background, we decided to use some Aperture Novas and make the light kind of blue. With that, the background then began to look a little bit more interesting. Uh, we created some nice texture for the background and the background started to look different. See that? Now the background starts to look a little bit more interesting. Okay, let's take a moment here and just talk about the lighting, what it's doing in this setup. So this is what it looks like with nothing. This is just the regular room lights, not very flattering, just kind of flat. So then we turn the room lights off. Now it's way too dark. So first we have my key light and this is my main light source. And if you see, I'm looking at this dude here the light is coming from this far side of my face and the darker side of my face is closest to camera. This is standard lighting. This is how you create depth. You get the light on the far side of the face. This side closest to camera is darker. Next, we're pulling double duty here on both of these setups. Let's turn on the other dude's key light. See, it's kind of like a backlight for me. It's giving me a little bit of separation here. It's illuminating my shoulder and the back of my head. So this key light is this dude's backlight and this key light is my backlight. Okay, now the background light is turned on and you can see now that it's on, there is a separation that's happening. Uh, the background is a little bit more blue and so it makes my skin tones pop on camera and it looks a little bit better. Also, the angle of the light in the background is very important. This light is creating interest. If this light in the background was coming from, let's say the same point of view as the camera from over here, it would look flat and boring. Don't forget about audio. This was the kind of shoot where we didn't want to see a lavalier mic on someone's shirt. That can be distracting to me. So we decided to use boom mics and we boomed the mics over to get to the people here. Here's my thing about boom mics. If you're gonna use them, get them in as close as you can. It sounds a lot better when the mic is closer, okay? The problem when you bring it in close is it really frustrates your camera operator because the framing gets all messed up and you can't have the proper amount of headroom. So that brings me back again to our main angle, our wide shot. What we did was lock off our camera. We made sure it didn't move and we set our lights and mics exactly how we wanted to. And then, after the interview was over, we had everyone walk away and we grabbed a clean plate and we were able to erase the mics, the lights, and make it look like they were never there. So you may ask me, Thomas, what would you have done if you would have had a bigger budget with more stuff, you know? Well, 
I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked that question. I would have had uh, this camera on a slider, motion controlled slider. That way we could still paint out stands that we don't want to see. Then I would have had two more cameras even closer to the subjects, right over their shoulders to get an even more intimate feel on these interviews. Did you like how I used the word intimate, Stephen? Intimate. Now, if you want to do a knee to knee on a budget, I would do two cameras, put the lights off to the side, and you don't have to worry about the third wide angle. But that doesn't quite work as well because then you don't get the two of them together in the same shot and it doesn't feel as intimate. Intimate. If you enjoyed this video and you want to subscribe to Epic Light Media, please don't. We are not accepting any more subscribers, but you can subscribe to Lewis Potts. Lewis Potts is a new YouTuber and everyone is jumping on his bandwagon. He is getting subscribers left and right and his channel is growing as it should be because he is the most talented, most incredible person I have ever had the opportunity to meet in my life. Subscribe to Lewis Potts. Unsubscribe from Epic Light Media. Thank you.